Hey YouTube, new guitar Friday, managed to get one this week. So this is a LTD Viper 50. I know that because it says Viper 50 on the fretboard, like that. So it's a sort of like a Jazzmaster SG maybe. That's kind of like it's sort of offset. Um, SGs I think are my favourite guitars. This is my guitar. You can see, so it's kind of, it's, it's kind of very similar. It's just it's a bit skew, like the way a like a jazz master is to a or a jazz bass is to a P bass. You know, it's sort of, um, yeah. So this is the serial number starts I R O four, made in Indonesia. So O four would be two thousand and four, I think. It's got ESP tuners. It's got a really cool volute there, which actually my baby metal guitar has on it as well. Just means it's less likely to break, it's a good idea. It says ESP on it. But totally cool, small flake, sparkle, silver finish. Which, if the sun comes out again, I'll try and put it in it, but it really is darn sparkly. Couple of buckers, uh, Tunematic bridge, volume, tone, UA pickup selector. <laughs> Bolt on neck with a sort of high access thing on it. It's also 24 frets, unlike an SG. But I mean, Actually, if I look at it, I bet you that neck pickup's in the right place. People often complain that the neck pickup on a other Gibsons and stuff isn't the right place because on a Les Paul it's right up against the bottom of the fretboard, but in the SG it's actually down a wee bit. And if you imagine there were 24 frets, it's probably in exactly the same position. In relation there, so there's a gap between the end of the fretboard. Oh. Yeah, enough comparisons to the Gibson. It's a bit more of a, a heavy metal type guitar, I think. It just it seems to be a bit more, well, a bit rocker. I'm just using, even though I've now got my super massive pedal board, I'm just going to be using the rap pedal just because that's what all my other videos did for comparison. <laughs> I really need to practice just playing in general up at the very end of the fretboard. It's the only time I ever do this in videos, so I'm showing off guitar, so I'm really crap at it. My fingers are just too big to fit in, so I played a mandolin when you're not that high. So, it's a quite it's a good guitar, um, quite high up in the range. What I'm noticing is, though, see, because of where the strap button is, it, it wants to hang like that, which I find annoying. But maybe if you're into your chugga chugga, that's where it wants to be. But to me, it's see if you just uh, put the strap button there on the metal plate, it would just go and it would sit exactly where I wanted to. But this guitar, um, it's, it's, it's still plain. See, the thing is, it's like, I, I had to do the whole bridge off and stuff and put it, I had to put it back on again and reset it. And uh, I just kind of worked up, up the way. I've got the action so damn low, it's unbelievable. I don't have any guitars that have got an action like this. But it's, it's too low, but it, it doesn't seem to be buzzing. It seems to be able to cope with it. But I mean, the action is pure ridiculous on it. I don't know, I suppose if you were doing sort of finger tappy stuff. I'm not good at this either, so I'll give it a go though. Yeah, I can hit the notes, I just know they're not the right notes, or the right order, but... <laughs> yeah, so... But it's got a really, 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 really low action. Not much more to do, say about this. Um, just a volume and a tone. 
I was going to do my usual putting in, you know, switches and stuff, but the thing is, it, it works too well to really want anything else. I might put a, a, a phase switch on the tone control, so when you've got both pickups on, you can sort of cleaner, uh, cleaner sounds. I'm going to try using the compressor and see if that makes means I can play clean without it overloading the camera. at the start which I didn't the frets on this are huge but see if I can hold it long enough for you to focus in on them I think if I put it right up in front of the camera there's a camera there mm. they're rounded really rounded on the end which is really nice I've obviously spent a lot of time I don't know I'm not sure that's a standard feature I wonder if maybe this has been done has it maybe been given to I don't know, Jimmy Moon or something like that to make them you know like a luthier I wonder if someone's actually done that or that's a standard feature. Um, actually, my baby metal guitar has has the same thing, so it must be um, it must be an ESP LTD thing. It's got the same really rounded fret ends, which is nice. I'm not sure I'm that am I that much of an, an LTD fan. They make really good guitars. I'm just not sure about the shape of them. I mean, to me, I remember seeing these before, it was just a pure, uh, wonky SG, but it's quite nice. I mean, the thing is, it gazed over because it's a really nice guitar. If you've got other types of distortion, Zach Wild distortion. <laughs> different from the Gibson either. Uh, maybe, a wee bit, so maybe a wee bit smaller but it's a similar sort of is that a C section you call it? Or no it's a D where it's kind of sort of flatter on the back. Nice. And I'm a, I'm a big fan of painted necks especially if it's going to be spangly silver paint. But um, what I was just going to say I think just one last thing see when, you, when I took it to bits to have a look and see just because I do that sort of thing actually just to tighten up the the knobs because they're always a bit loose in a, a new guitar well 2004 so not particularly new um it's got big pots in the back you get like on cheap guitars you get sort of pots that are maybe the size of a 5p piece and then you get ones at the size of a 2p piece on uh, better guitars i'm not going to argue that it makes any difference whatsoever but i mean if they went to the went to the point of putting in bigger pots they've not really scrimped anywhere else on the guitar and it feels that way i mean it's I suppose the, the, the way I would say they've, they've kept the cost down is it's pretty basic. There's not an awful lot to it, but I mean, what there is there is good. You know, it's good quality hardware, good pickups. 
just about well, big pots, switch, you know, that's it. And it's not, it doesn't have any binding or any fancy stuff. So the things that are there, they've done really well. Fight nut as well. Yeah, so I, I kind of decided I wasn't going to do anything to this, but I might put the face switch in just for the sake of it. I could break into the pickups and put coil splits in, but I'm not sure that someone who's got this really wants to have coil splits anyway. You know, do you really want fendery sounds if you're playing an SG? I had a, a shot actually, my pal gave me. He gave me his SG and I gave it back to him because I felt guilty, but um. Like a modern Gibson SG and it push pull pots, which gave you single coils, and something about an SG with single coils, just like, hmm. or obviously with P90 is awesome, but like single coils, like, eh, something not right about it. Yeah, so, oh, it's got a wee, bit of, a wee bit of a chip on the head, I've just noticed there, with the, the paint's off, and a couple of wee dinks around the outside. This is the classic guitar that's never been played ever, but has been moved about the house a couple of times and bashed into door frames. You know, it's got a couple of dinks in it, but it's got no wear. Just a couple of bashes where it's fallen over. And quite a nice colour thing. Depending on what, what, what colour the light is, it shines on it. It's good. Rock and roll. Um, if you do end up buying this, I'll probably not sell this this weekend, maybe the weekend after when everyone's been paid. I can fit the coil splits on push-pull pots or switches if you want for not very much. Rockin'.